welcome back to Lesson 2, talking about race reaction today. And again, this is part of our kinetics and equilibrium unit. So in today's lesson, we're going to be talking about what are rates, what are the factors of reaction rates, and catalysts. Okay, so what are rates? A rate is a measure of speed of any change that occurs over an interval of time. Rate of a chemical reaction is often measured of a change of number of moles during that interval of time. So if you think of rate, you've definitely seen it before, like miles per hour. That is a rate uh, a car can go. So in this little diagram, we're showing that we're starting with one type of substance, which is what we're going to call square. And as the square substance starts to react, we're noticing as time progresses, the square substances are turning into the circle substance. And as more and more time progresses, then eventually we make mostly all circle substance. And all rates are really dependent about on those amount of collisions that can be created. So thinking about the different types of chemical reactions, some of these that we see are going to be rates that are faster and slower. So for example, the bleach in the top left hand corner on the red fabric is a very fast reaction. Fireworks is another fast reaction. As is the Alka-Seltzer tablets in water. Those are your fast reactions. However, there are some slow reactions. Like the rust on a wrench. The, the decomposition of the plastic. The eroding of rocks. Yeah. So these are different types of rates of reactions that we see in normal everyday objects. So there are different things that can affect the rate of reaction. And again, the effects will cause more or less collisions. We have to keep that in mind for all of this. So we have nature of reactants, uh, concentration, pressure, temperature, surface area, catalysts. So when we talk about nature of the reactants, we're talking about the difference between ionic and covalent substances. So an ionic substance is going to break apart in water because they can form aqueous ions. However, covalent reactants take a very, very long time because of the fact their nonmetal atoms are sharing the electrons. So let's think about that and apply it into the actual practice. So here is magnesium chloride. And we have some sort of sugar molecule. Between these two molecules, which of the two is going to be more reactive in a chemical reaction? Think about what type of bonding is going on between the different elements in both of these compounds. So you should realize that magnesium chloride is going to be our more reactive substance just because of the fact it is ionic. However, the C2H6O2 is covalent because all of the atoms inside its molecule are nonmetals. So in this example, the covalent molecule is going to be the least reactive of the two. That doesn't mean it's not going to be reactive. It's just going to take a longer period of time to react. Increasing the concentration of any reactant will increase the reaction rate because more particles in a given space, there's going to be less space between those particles and again, causing more collisions. So more collisions, faster rate of reaction. And we can also think about that with flavor and how different flavors, for example, give you different types of sensations. So if you think about it, a very dilute soda or beverage or juice, you really don't taste the actual molecules that are responsible for the flavor. But if you have a very concentrated amount of that juice or soda, then you can really taste what the chemicals are. So looking at these diagrams on the slide right now, uh, you will see that on the left we have less reactive molecules, so there's more space between them, more space, less collisions. But on the right side, we added more reactants, less space, more collisions, more collisions, faster reaction. Pressure is going to be another factor that is only going to be affecting gases. So if we were to increase the pressure of a reaction, only the gases would be affected. Because gases are compressible. They're the only ones. So if we increase the pressure, our volume is going to decrease. And as the pressure increases, volume decreases, more collisions are going to happen. Temperature increasing will also affect the rate of the reaction because you're making those particles move faster, faster movement, more collisions, again, more collisions, faster rate of reaction. 
And temperature, again, is the average kinetic energy. As you increase the temperature, you're increasing the speed of all your particles so they can bounce into each other at faster rates. And you can do this at home. If you were to take one of those glow sticks or light sticks, you can stick one in the freezer and crack it, leave one out in room temperature and activate it, and put one in really, really hot water. If you were to try this, you would see that the hot water glow stick is going to glow the most or the brightest. And which one's going to die faster? Probably the hot one, just because of the fact it's using up its reactants much, much, much faster. Right. So increasing surface area, which really just means making the substance smaller in size. So if you have a sugar cube, if you were to smash that all up and make little tiny granules of sugar, this is the idea of making surface area larger. Um, because the smaller the particle, the larger the surface area in total. Increasing the surface area gives you more surfaces to react with. And again, more reactive surfaces, more collisions, more collisions, faster rate of reaction. So let's look at this little animation of what occurs when you take steel wool and combine it with fire. So normally fire and steel don't do anything because steel is dominantly in a big, big, big piece. But when you have really tiny, small pieces of steel wool, you can see the amount of energy that is flowing through this sample. And I'm pretty sure it is very hot. Adding a catalyst will also affect our rate of reaction. It will affect it a little differently than the others have. So catalysts, if we're noticing on the diagram, which is showing an exothermic reaction, the catalyst is going to be in red. And all what it does is it lowers the amount of energy needed for the reaction to take place. So it's lowering your activation complex, it is lowering the activation energy for the forward reaction, and it lowers the activation energy for the reverse reaction. Catalysts will speed up a reaction, but it will not affect your reactants or your products. So on the left, we're looking at an endothermic reaction without a catalyst, which we've been seeing in class recently. And on the right, we're noticing now another endothermic reaction, but with a catalyst. We're also noticing on the picture to the right that our activation energy is going to be much less. Also notice that they usually show a catalyst in terms of a dotted line. Often on the Regents exam, they will ask you to add a catalyst to a potential energy diagram. Make sure you understand that it is just lowering that activation energy. And finally, the last thing you need to know is that your heat of reaction or delta H with a catalyst or the heat of reaction without a catalyst are the exact same kilojoule value. Okay, that is because reactants and products have not changed. Alrighty, so the stuff you should have learned today. We talked about reaction rates, we talked about the different influences of those reactions, we talked about ionic versus covalent, the effects of concentration, mm -hmm. pressure, temperature, surface area, and using catalysts. Other than that, hope you guys enjoy this video, and have a great night. Auf Wiedersehen.